I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Samantha once again we're about to another review there's another patreon review for Trevin uh, thank you so much for that if anyone's ever interested in requesting any type of videos you do so either directly via my PayPal or join my patreon the links are down below in the info box if not no worries but if so thank you but the film he wanted me to talk about was holes from 2003 which I had heard about I really wasn't sure because I'm like, I don't know, holes, I mean, some of us like holes, but this ain't the holes they don't want to be talking about. This is a different movie starring someone like a Debbie or something, but this holes is, I never knew of the source material, and it's a film where I was pleasantly surprised by. I was pleasantly surprised by this film. There are moments I don't care for but for the most part this was a little bit more thoughtful it was a movie where I thought the cast did their jobs well and it wasn't as trendworthy or awkward or embarrassing as I thought it would be because the story of the film Shia LaBeouf who I don't mind. A lot of people don't like him. He may be a nutso in real life, but I've liked him in movies. Disturbia, Eagle Eye. I thought he was good in this. He's a guy who his family supposedly has been cursed. He doesn't believe in it, but a lot of his family does. To the point where Henry Wrinkler, his dad, is an inventor. He's trying to get this invention to finally work, but things are not going the best. Shia, he is accused of a crime he didn't commit. He sent 18 months to this detention center where it's out in the middle of nowhere and people like Sigourney Weaver, who is the warden of this place, and John Voigt, who they have to address as Mr. Sir, they're supposed to dig, tell these kids to dig a hole, one hole a day, certain length, certain width. And part of you goes, well, why the hell are they doing this? The other part is, oh, well, it's some type of punishment to give them to do something. So they go out there, they dig a hole a day, and you end up a bit, learn a bit more about the characters, a little bit more about Shia, his family, mainly himself, the people that he meets. And once in a while, you get flashbacks. You get flashbacks to his ancestors, deal with Eartha Kitt. Interesting to see Eartha Kitt in there. About how the ancestor Shia's family had this deal with Eartha Kitt. And in order to finalize the deal, he was supposed to bring her up to this mountain. But he went to America and he fucking forgot. So that made his family cursed. From then on, whew, up to the shitter of creeps. Then at times he did flashbacks to what's really going on here. Because what you ultimately find out, long story short, 
is Sigourney Weaver, John Voight, and another guy. I forget the actor's name, but he was in Oh Brother Where Art Thou. He's been in other stuff. They want these kids to dig because these characters know that something's out there. Something's buried out there, so they're using the kids to try to find it. And you get flashbacks to what that pertains to. I'll be honest, I didn't care for the flashbacks. Patricia Arquette is listed in the cast. She's only in the flashbacks because the flashbacks takes place many, 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 many years ago. Decades and decades ago. So, I don't, when it got to the flashbacks, some of them I understood, but some of them, it just, it just broke the momentum so much and I just was more interested and Shia, with this juvenile detention center, trying to get along with this gang of folks, I thought their conversations with each other, their, their back and forth with each other, him becoming friends and bonding with this little kid named Zero, whose real name is Hector, seeing people like John Voight and Sigourney Weaver having a little bit of fun, playing roles that a bit different from the usual because John Void is usually in more serious fare like Deliverance and Runaway Train Enemy of the State Sidorian Weaver again normally in more serious films like well shouldn't say that she was in Ghostbusters but I mean not a lot of kids movies that they're in and this is a kids movie but it's nothing that I get embarrassing that oh god you know why the fuck am I watching this because sometimes with kids films that does when you're older you watch you go it wasn't really like that with this and I just thought Shia did a good job I thought I had a good heart to it it's a good look to movie. I didn't even know this was directed by Andrew Davis. The Andrew Davis that did The Fugitive and Collateral Damage and Above the Law. Uh, this is the one of those films of his I never saw. And I'm like, Andrew Davis did this? But I thought they he did a good job with the location they shot in. It definitely made you feel that they were in the middle of nowhere. I thought it did a nice job filming the, the landscape, the area, especially when some of our characters is steep into more of that barren area. And I just thought it was one of those movies that at the end of the day, I don't know how faithful it is to the source material. So maybe it's one of those where this did it a lot better than say Artemis Fowl which I reviewed recently and I did not know in the source material of that. I could just say as a movie on its own, it was a piece of shit. This one, it's not a piece of shit. I thought it, it definitely made you feel as if these kids were lonely, really were in the middle of nowhere. You feel build the loneliness. At times when Shia LaBeouf, he's dug the hole and everyone else is left and he's there by himself and he's looking around and these wide landscapes of this barren desert. And I thought that the cinematographer, as well as Andrew Davis, they did a really good job with this. The actors did their jobs well. Stephen St. John, cinematographer, I was just looking his name up. Tim Blake Nelson is the third guy I was thinking of. There's Sigourney Weaver, John Voight, and Tim Blake Nelson. But yeah, it's one of those things that I watch and I'm going... I'm getting more out of this than I originally thought when going into this. Just, it just, the title itself, Holes. Okay, well, what? obviously, okay, it's going about holes and not the, the kind of holes we like. So what is really this whole thing going to entail? And then the fact it's a Disney movie, 
And nowadays, that's the kiss of fucking death for a Disney movie. But maybe because Andrew Davis is a pretty damn competent director. I mean, if I look at his filmography real quick, I should have done this before, but fuck it. It is what it is. He's one of those directors that has a fairly good track record. And let me look real quick. Sorry about that, folks. The Final Terror. I actually don't mind that slasher film. Yeah, I, I wish it had a bit more of a body count and a bit more gore. But I liked the look of the film. I didn't mind the cast of the film. And overall, as a slasher film, I liked The Final Terror. Code of Silence, I reviewed that. Decent Chuck Norris film. Not my favorite, but a decent one. Above the Law, one of my favorite Steven Seagal movies. The Package... I still have to see that film. Gene Hackman, Tommy Lee Jones. I still want, I want to see that someday. Under Siege, great Seagull film. The Fugitive, one of Harrison Ford's best films. Steel Bid, Steel Little. Never seen that. Chain Reaction. It's okay. I don't hate the film. I do think it's a lesser version of The Fugitive. But I don't hate Chain Reaction. It's okay. A Perfect Murder... Didn't care for that one. It's a remake of a Hitchcock film, but I just wasn't my cup of tea. Clow Damage, I think, is one of Arnold's more underrated films. This one, I liked. Last film he did was The Guardian. That was 2006. Wow. So he hasn't done a film in 14 years. And The Guardian, that's the one with Kevin Costner and Ashton Kutcher. I remember that being... Eh. Kind of like, I've seen better, I've seen worse type of movies. I know that's not much of a thought process, but still. But overall, a pretty good track record. But anyway, getting back to this. I know a lot of people liked the flashback elements. And how they contributed to the story. I think mainly because, yeah, we got information important to the current story but I, I i was much more interested in the present story in shia the detention center shia's con little i wouldn't say confrontations but little uneasiness with john voice character and him being john Voy being such an asshole but asshole they could be in a kid's film And I didn't think the film was manipulative. It wasn't trying to manipulate your emotions. It wasn't trying to be too melodramatic or too overdramatic. Uh, I thought that it wasn't too titty. It wasn't too s trying to be sweet. It wasn't too many jokes that are fart jokes, puke jokes, or anything of that sort. It was a movie that... Again, had some nice scenery to it. I thought the actors did their jobs fairly well. I thought that they were natural in their performances. It wasn't anything hokey or too silly. Because oh, it's a kids film, so we gotta be exceptionally silly. No, it didn't. It didn't really treat the audience like a moron in that aspect. The story was interesting enough to make me wonder how it was going to end. Not that it was not predictable, but it was just, oh, yeah, I want to see how this all works out. And it was one of those things where I watch it all. It was a bit more surprising than I thought it would. I think Andrew Davis really had a good competence in this production where he's like okay I looked at his filmography he had never made a kids film before that so I guess the director went you know what yeah I'm gonna make a kids film 
but I don't want to make the kids film that is extremely stupid. I don't want to make the kids film that just fill with fart jokes and shit jokes. I don't want to make the kids film that makes people feel embarrassed to watch it if you're a little bit older. And you guys will probably like the flashbacks a bit more than me. But even with that nitpick of mine and mine only, in a way it kind of shows that I was getting into the story of Shia's character, how he's handling his juvenile detention center, the people he's bonding with, some better, some worse. It is a pretty decent looking film. The music is perfectly fine for the picture. And yeah, I, I'm i being kind of vague. Which sometimes I'm trying to do more of because I don't want to give every single thing away for people who haven't seen it. But overall, it's not a bad film. Not a bad picture. And, you know, I was decently surprised. Decently surprised by this. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I, I bought the bonding between Shia and this little kid zeros one's teaching one how to read and the other loves to dig so he's helping Shia dig better and the body didn't seem forced didn't seem arbitrary it seemed they took enough time to bond and then you learn a bit more stuff and it just made a bit sense Compared to some movies where it's like, where the fuck did that come from? How did they become friends? Where did that come from? Isn't that so out of the blue? It didn't feel that way in this, which I appreciate. And yeah, I... Yeah, it's a Disney film, but it's a Disney film that doesn't suck ass. <laughs> which, good luck trying to find that kind nowadays. I guess Andrew Davis is like, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> And while, again, his trapped worker is imperfect, who is perfect director-wise? I mean, my favorite director is John Carpenter, but even I don't like The Ward or Memoirs of a Visible Fucking Man. But with that said, not bad film at all. So, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.